Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll run through the various short range models have a look at the potential for more showers and thunderstorms over the next few days could be some more very active systems coming through and then we'll have a look at the GFS run and the ensemble to see what's happening over the next couple of weeks. It's been very warm today the warmest day of the year so far reaching 27 and a half degrees in Heathrow and quite widely mid 20s and east areas away from the rain as you can see on the live radar but over the next week or two it is going to be cooling down back towards average maybe slightly above average so low 20s will be sort of a good day uh, come next week but for the time being it's still warm it's quite humid out there there's a lot of heavy rain and thunderstorms incoming over the next two or three days so remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description now you can see at the moment we do have very heavy rain on the live radar and this is because we've got very hot air over europe it's seeing temperatures skyrocket into the mid 30s 40 degrees potentially towards spain out in the atlantic we've got low pressure we've got cool air coming in bumping in against the hot air in Europe and what that does is create big weather fronts and those weather fronts are sitting over the top of the UK at the moment and because we've got really warm humid air filtering in from the south it has meant this rain is very heavy and you can see a lot of lighter colours in there oranges and reds indicating torrential downpours yes some of there could be a few little embedded thundery showers within this at the moment we're not seeing any major lightning rates on the radar but over the coming hours there's a little bit of cake mixing in so we could see a few thundery showers on the southern flank you can see a few thunderstorms across northern france and maybe just into central southern england could see a little bit but nothing too crazy but widespread very heavy rain across northern ireland it's abysmal at the moment and this will be spreading eastwards the northeastern areas, it's going to be quite heavy. The southern and more southeastern areas, it's going to be rainy for a bit, but not quite as extensive. You can see the precipitation here isn't as widespread, but it is heavy along the core of the rain. Now, if we do put the temperatures on, according to this, just before 6 p.m., uh, 6 p.m. now, so um, temperatures are on the down. Um, but you can see the very warm temp conditions we saw across central and east areas, getting up into the mid 20s. As I said, 27 and a half degrees seen at Heathrow. Um, widespread low 20s, low to mid 20s. But further westwards, under the rain, you can see more blues mixing in. So down towards low teens, around sort of 10 to 12 degrees, really cool. And you can see across Europe, real thick reds, getting up into the mid 30s, and across southern parts of Spain, potentially hitting 40 degrees, getting up very very hot indeed you can see all these little patches of yellow that's where thundery showers are breaking out and you can see why we've got this heavy rain cool air to our west warm hot air to our east as i said bringing big lift for these showers and this will continue over the next couple couple days with this battleground situation between cooler low pressure and warmer air in the near continent and it's going to fuel showers and thunderstorms so if we do now have a look at what is happening from the UK Met Office run over the next five days, have a look at what we're going to be seeing from uh, in terms of showers and thundery activity. Now you can see the very heavy rain spreading through at the moment. It will slowly clear eastwards over the course of this evening and by around midnight most of it will be offshore and it should turn more bright. But more showers will start to pack in from the west. Now, as we head towards Wednesday afternoon, you can see again another weather front pushing in again. Colder air or cooler air behind it, hotter, warmer air uh, to its east. Could be a bit of line convection along that. And as we head through Wednesday evening, this is where we could see another big thunderstorm system develop. Through Wednesday evening, you can see very hot air coming up from the near continent, potentially some French imports. Cooler air from the west This engaging together. We're seeing big, heavy showers and thunderstorm breaking out in the southeast quadrant. Now, it's uncertain at this stage how far the Cape does come into southeast England, as we'll see with the WRF and our pairs runs in a minute. You'll see there is a little bit of uncertainty how far northwards and westwards the Cape does drift, and this will enhance any thunder reactivity. If we don't see that extensive Cape, it will more just be generally rain um, and heavy rain, torrential rain maybe. But if we do see that Cape engaging within it, we could see heavy showers and thunderstorms develop. Now beyond that, that precipitation and thunder, thunder activity does clear. By Friday, uh, Thursday afternoon, a bit of cloud drifting up from the south, but pretty dry. 
By Friday, again, some more, maybe some more heavy rain and maybe some more thunderstorms in the far southeast. But you can see generally precipitation is heading in from the west as we go into a more of a westerly regime with cloud and precipitation coming in from the west. You look at the uh, pressure charts, you can see generally more of a westerly direction. So that southerly feed is cut off. So turning cooler as we head towards the weekend and start next week. You can see a lot of oranges around at the moment, very warm indeed, but you can see what's fueling the weather front around one or two degrees at 850 HPA to the west of the weather front, to the east, getting up towards 11, 12, 13 degrees at 850 HPA, giving those temperatures into the mid 20s, getting up towards 27 and a half degrees in Heathrow, the hottest day of the year so far. As we're through Wednesday, you can see still warm further south and eastwards, but not quite as hot as today, so back towards low 20s. And by Wednesday evening, you see another warm plume of air into the far southeast, which is going to fuel those storms. 15 degree ice firm drifting into parts of southeast England, maybe it's into the Kent area. And again, how far northwards and westwards that pushes will decide how intense the showers and storms are. Through Thursday, we do still see warmer air in the far south and southeast, but eventually cooler air from the west will win out. And you see by Saturday afternoon, widely low single digit at 850 HPA. Um, so, yeah, not too bad. Still around average generally for upper air temperatures, but not quite as warm as we have at the moment. That warm air is still just to our south. So a slight uh, shift in the ice bars could start to bring very hot air once again. But at the moment, it looks pretty westerly into the weekend. Now, if we do have a look at the general uh, two meters temperatures, we see very warm conditions today, uh, 23, 24 degrees widely, getting up towards, as I said, 27 degrees in London, but you can see across the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland struggling low teens in around 10 to 14 degrees, as we do have that heavy rain around. Now, tomorrow, those temperatures are not going to quite be as warm, but still could be 22, 23 degrees, maybe isolated 24 or 20. Five, but more widely into the mid to high teens. By Thursday, those temperatures, um, once again, could be all right. 21, 22, 23 degrees in the east, but more widely could be high teens, maybe sort of 18 to 20 degrees. And by Friday, you can see those temperatures starting to be cut off, maybe mid to high teens in a few spots, but widely sort of 13 to 15 degrees, much cooler. You can see across the near continent, still 26, 27 degrees. So that warm air is getting cut off to our south. And by Saturday, more average sort of conditions, 17 to 20 degrees. Decent in the sunshine, but not that warm anymore as we are starting to pull in a cooler westerly flow. Not cold, but cooler than what we've had recently. Now, if we do continue to have a look at that thundery risk by having a look at the WRF to start, you can see a little bit of cake mixing in this evening that could pep up some of that rain, maybe a little bit in east areas, but nothing too crazy. And by tomorrow afternoon, not that much cape around. But as we head through the evening into the far southeast, you can see some cape is drifting up from the near continent, and that could fuel those showers and storms. A big uncertainty, though, how far northwards and westwards it does come. Beyond that, that cape does drift away with those big storms back into near continent. And generally, cape values are not particularly too high for the rest of the week. So potentially our last proper thundery batch there. Maybe more on Wednesday afternoon, depending on how much of a southerly flow we do get in. Now, if you do have a look at those pre uh, precipitation, you can see very heavy rain spreading in at the moment. Um, and it does clear away um, by the evening. And you see by Wednesday evening into um, early hours of Thursday, big showers and storms breaking out. This is far south. You can see those yellows and oranges mixing in, heavy precipitation, thundery activity, spreading eastwards through East Anglia before clearing away through Thursday. Uh, and it hasn't quite updated to the end of the run, but if we do continue on the 6 Ed run, you can see generally drier into Friday, maybe a few showers and storms developing in the far south, and a weather front spreading in from the west. Now, if you do have a look at the Arpege, see how that does compare. Again, a little bit of cape maybe this evening, but nothing too crazy. And then we see that increased cape through tomorrow evening into early hours of Thursday. Maybe in the far southeast, nothing too crazy at this stage, but could be uh, fueling a few showers and storms there for clearing into the near continent before things do turn a little bit more settled. If you do have a look at precipitation generally, you can see the very heavy rain spreading in at the moment. Clearing through by uh, around midnight, forcing more precipitation and showers through tomorrow evening, maybe turning very heavy and thundery in the far southeast into East Anglia, maybe northeast England as well, for clearing 
Thursday, much drier through the evening and Friday afternoon, more showers breaking out and weather fronts pushing in from the west. But again, slowly turning a little bit more settled. Um, four winds veering from the west for Saturday and Sunday. And although, yes, they're westerly direction, they're going to be a little bit drier because without that real warm air come pushing up from the south, it means the showers are not going to pep up as much, not going to be as extensive and not going to be as thundery, even though we're generally in a more unstable air mass. Generally, westerly, low-pressure air mass should generally be a little bit more showery and unstable than a southeasterly flow. But because it's much cooler, holds less moisture, so those showers are not going to be quite as intense at this stage, of course. So we do now finish the video by just having a look at the longer range briefly by having a look at the GFS and the ensembles. Now you can see southerly flow at the moment with low pressure out in the west, high pressure to our east. Um, as we move through, low pressure will move in and win out by the week uh, at weekend. And we go into a generally westerly flow. Low pressure in around, but it's not deep low pressure, so not crazy amount of showers, but could see some precipitation, persistent precipitation, maybe in the north and west. Beyond that, as we head toward day 10, uh, so sort of end of next week, we stay in a westerly flow, high pressure to our south, low pressure to our north, and we start to see high pressure building back in, and we see a bit of an easterly flow developing. Pretty warm, not particularly cold, and because it's not coming from a real south easterly direction, it's not getting that really warm moist air from the uh, from sort of Spain and the Mediterranean. So it's going to be warm, potentially mid twenties again, but not quite as thundery as that. And we just stay in this extension of the Azores High up towards Scandinavia, looking really nice indeed. Now, if we do have a look at the upper air temperatures, if we just have a look at the temperature deviation just briefly at the start, you can see how we are a good four to six degrees above average, and we stay very warm over the next few days before it clears off by the week, and that very hot air stays just to our south. So if we do just actually have a look at the raw temperature charts from the uh, GFS run, see very warm air just to our south, as I said, and we stay in this westerly flow as we head towards the end of the weekend. Fresher, but not crazy cold by any means, and right towards the end of the run, towards day 10 and beyond, high pressure built in, with a little bit of a chillier air mass initially, but an easterly flow is fairly pleasant, getting up towards 10 degrees at 850 HPA, and of course, being slightly more from a westerly uh, direction, it's not going to be quite as uh, unstable, so less showers and storms around, though staying more exclusively under the little trough over central parts of Europe. Now, if we do finish the video by having a final look at the ensembles. Now, the 12Z ensembles haven't quite come out fully yet, but you can see generally we are going to return to around average, maybe slightly above average, towards that 5 to 7 degree mark at 850 HPA over the next sort of 10 days or so. Precipitation isn't going to be crazy high. A few decent precipitation spikes over the next few days, but that's mainly from convective potential, from heavy showers and thunderstorms. But in the longer term, generally just a few showers coming in on that westerly flow. If you have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see very warm over the next couple of days, still getting to the low 20s, dipping down a little bit towards the weekend and start of next week before returning back towards that high teens, low 20s. Now, I said in this in a few, vid a few videos ago, but as we are progressing later in the year, as we are getting towards proper summer period, it means warmer upper air temperatures are not necessity for warm surface temperatures. So even at the moment, we've got 10 degrees at 850 HPA plus giving mid 20s in the south. In around a month's time, we won't need 10 to 15 degree ice firm to get mid 20s. We might need 5 to 10 degree ice firm. So it just means even though these upper air temperatures are not going to be quite as warm as they are now in a week or two time, it's easier to get better surface conditions, warmer surface conditions in a week or two time. So perhaps still seeing decent temperatures into low 20s, even though those upper air temperatures are dropping away by a good few degrees. Again, though, it is all dependent on sunshine amounts. The more precipitation we see, the less warmer conditions. So if you do have a look at the ECMDF, have a look at what that's showing over the next couple of weeks. Look at the midnight run. Again, very similar. Warm at the moment. Staying pretty warm over the next sort of seven days. Perhaps dipping slightly below average in around day 10. Unlike what the GFS is showing. Again, I think that's just uh, depending on what sort of cooler air masses out in the Atlantic. Just brief colder sectors moving through, but not giving anything substantial. A degree below average looking like there. And in the long term, it's around average. Uh, looking really decent. Um... Precipitation signal is not crazy high. Yes, it's higher than the GFS, but as I said, it's because we've got 50 ensemble members on this chart, so there's always going to be more precipitation spikes. It generally is not too bad. And if we do finish by just have a look at the sea level pressure, you can see, yes, 
dropping slightly in around a week's time, but returning back towards higher pressure, around 1,020 millibars for the last week of May. Now, that's not guaranteed, of course. Ensemble members, they couldn't change, but it's still looking pretty decent. So for the time being, we still have warmer conditions over the next few days, especially further eastwards. But there's going to be a continued risk of heavy rain, heavy showers in general, and maybe some severe thunderstorms potentially in that southeast quadrant where we're seeing those warmer conditions where the unstable air does interact with that hotter air. We could see big thunderstorms perhaps tomorrow night and maybe a few other isolated thunderstorms in and around. So that's what we've got to keep an eye on. Keep you up to, I'll keep you up to date with all the weather warnings if we do see anything issued for those storms potentially tomorrow night. But elsewhere, there's still going to be a lot of rain around. So do make sure you keep up to date with the radar and you do know what the conditions are going to be like where you are. It is quite a changing picture. There's a lot of this precipitation is convection based, so it's very difficult to forecast exactly um, other than simply looking at the radar. So to, please do stay up to date and do stay safe out there if we do see those thundery outbreaks. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.